Can you speak about the homicide surviving victim of the case. Responding units that, uh, that morning found a bloody crime scene and located two women, one deceased, the other bound and injured. When this investigation began, detectives had only the story of Ms. Norwood to go by. We put out a description for two masked men dressed in black. We received many calls and tips from the community, some of which led us to persons of interest in the case. In one case, in fact, we were actually doing surveillance on a suspect who fit the description and was believed to have been in Bethesda that night. He has since been eliminated as a suspect. As the investigation continued, our analysis of forensic evidence was not supporting Ms. Norwood's story. In fact, it was taking us in a different direction. After finding physical and forensic evidence inside the deceased victim's car, Ms. Norwood became a suspect in the case. We've obtained enough probable cause to charge her with the homicide that occurred that night. In addition to the evidence found in the car, we were able to determine that there were only two sets of footprints at the crime scene, one belonging to Ms. Norwood, another belonging to a size 14 shoe that was recovered in the store. There is no evidence to support that either victim was sexually assaulted. This investigation is still very active, and further discussion of the evidence against Ms. Norwood, beyond what I've released already, will be held for trial. Thank you, Chief. I want to thank the Department of Police, Chief Major, and all of those who worked with us in the last six days. I also want to thank the citizens of the business and the business community and all of those who step forward with all the advice and suggestions of the citizens of our law enforcement personnel to bring us to this particular point in our investigation. This is a serious crime. It's occurring in the present. Anywhere in the country, anywhere in the country, it's a crime situation. And we want to get a result in the crime situation. And I am delighted that we have been so far in order to bring us to the point that we are today. Let me say it loudly for you. We have one of the best law enforcement systems anywhere in this country. And we see on display the fine work of the men and women of this department. It is for us to really marvel at how hard they have worked for the last six days. Working 24 7 to make sure that we turn every day, out of every eye, across the river state, in order to make sure that this kind of investigation led to the kind of results we were seeking. From the people of Bethesda, from all of those in Montgomery County, we are here for you. We take some time seriously, and we are going to work as hard in any area of this county to make sure that you are safe and that you get the kind of results that you need. I'll now ask the uh, Councilman Roger Bellina, the Vice President of the County Council, to come forward. Mr. Executive, and let me add my congratulations to our police chief and to our assistant police chief, Mr. Tracy, who is the lead detective with respect to this investigation. And as you can appreciate, this was a lot of hard police detective work. So on behalf of the County Council, I want to Thank you. It's an honor of the good work that is done. And let me also speak in 
district council member who represents Bethesda. Because I can assure you that the people of Bethesda are breathing easier tonight than they were earlier today. There was a great deal of fear engendered by this crime. And I think everyone now can understand that Bethesda remains the incredible, safe, vibrant place that it has always been. So it is, I think, a terrible tragedy, horrific crime, and our community is safer than it was. Uh, Mr. Ken Freed will now read a prepared statement from the Lulu Letter Company. We are grateful for the dedicated efforts of the law enforcement community who have been working diligently to solve this crime and apprehend those responsible. We are also want to express our gratitude for the overwhelming expression of support and generosity from so many of you over this past week. Our first priority remains with the families and team members affected by this horrible tragedy and supporting them through the next stage of the recent developments. All of the three local stores will be closed through tomorrow, March 19th. We are asking the media to please respect the privacy of our educators, our employees, as we help them through the latest developments. We are unable to comment further because this is not going to be the investigation. I'll take, uh, I'll take the questions. What's the motive? What's the motive in this crime? Why? Um, maybe, uh, Chief, just a technical question. How do you spell uh, Brittany? Is it B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y? Or is it B-R-I-T-N-E-Y? Or? Is that really simple? We're going to have a press release that we'll give out. Chief, you yeah, said we found it in the car that helped you to question uh, the There was some uh, forensic and physical evidence. And is that how it's going to happen? We talked about how it's going to happen. As we uh, began, obviously, the uh, privacy will require uh, a great deal of work uh, to collect the evidence that was there. And, Collecting the physical evidence, the DNA evidence, uh, as we were going through the, uh, the autopsy report, uh, when we found the car, we found the victim's car, uh, we were able to process the inside of that. The forensic evidence and physical evidence was not supporting what uh, Ms. Gordon told us. And then you that was sexually assaulted. Is that based on just a little story? That is correct, yes. Do you believe that anybody else might have been involved in this helping Brittany? It's still a very active investigation. Uh, we have uh, we have no evidence right now uh, that there was anyone else in the store, but it is still a very active investigation. Are you suggesting that she used this size 14 shoe to make phony tracks? Um, what I'm suggesting is that there were tracks there. We recovered the, the, the shoe in the store. Whose shoe was it? It, it, it was belonged to the store. It was, it was uh, something that uh, people would wear in the store. What did that have to do with the case, though? Is that a well, the, the number of foot, the number of footprints in the, at the scene. Um, again, there were two, only two sets of footprints at the scene. And so there's a missing shoe? No, no, no. We have, we have the shoe. Did anybody <laughs> wear the shoe? <coughs> uh, prints were on the floor, so we're, we're assuming that they were wrong. There were reports that they were pretty much uh, tied up. Are you saying that she had herself tied up? Um, that, that I mean, we're still trying to <coughs> figure that out, but that, that is a possibility. And is the timeline still the same when it's been that? Real? Yes, I mean, we, we, uh, we do believe that uh, the they when they did close the store up, that they uh, left, that uh, Britain called and said that she left her wallet in the store, and that was the reason for our genuine return and open up the store to two men back in the store. Do you believe that in, in doing that, in asking her to return to the store, was there a plan for a confrontation of the 
At what point, Chief, did you confront Ms. Norwood about the, the hypothesis that police had arrived at and what was her response to Today. And what did she tell you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, discuss what, uh, what she did in any of the uh, interviews with her. Is it charged murder? She can charge yes, it is. Does she have a lawyer? Uh, I, I don't know. Can you say when and where she was arrested? Uh, she was arrested here. Here, and she came in for questioning. Of course. Had she missed it? Had she been cooperating? She had been cooperating, yes. This was uh, the third appointment that year. Where is she now? Um, she'll be at the, the central process in the seven months shortly. Did she confess to making the story up? Uh, I can't talk. You mentioned you don't know about the sequence of events. Uh, sequence of injuries. Uh, is it possible that she injured? That's certainly possible. It's, it's, also, possible that it's also possible that somebody else injured her and had to tie her up. Uh, there's no evidence to support that. Are you currently looking for anyone else? Yeah, it's still a very active investigation. Do you know she left the scene and came back with the assistant? Uh, uh, she, she, well, that was uh, part of the, uh, the evidence that we got from inside the car. Yes. So the evidence was in the victim's car, but the evidence you're saying when she moved the car. The, the evidence that we collected was in the deceased victim's car. Where was that car found? Might have been a suspect in the victim's car. Um, I, I don't know. Where was that? I believe it was part of the story. I don't know why. Where did you find it? Uh, it was about three blocks away off. know to go searching for Jana's car was it something that the suspect said um, that led you to try to find her car I mean where if it was three blocks this away is part of, this is part of the investigation to get Um, 
again, it turned out uh, they're, they're no longer coming. Is it going to trickle down as we did it become apparent to your investigators that maybe the, this initial story wasn't all the uh, As we began uh, analyzing forensic evidence uh, and uh, looked at the uh, medical reports, uh, it was not supported what the Ms. Uh, Norwood had told us. Uh, in fact, as I said before, it took us in another direction. Uh, and there were certain things that uh, certain facts that we were able to determine through forensic analysis that uh, could not be explained uh, by this world. Was it Ms. Norwood's DNA you're saying that was found in uh, Jana's car? I, I, I said that there was forensic evidence and blood evidence. I didn't say anything beyond that. You mentioned two witnesses who were going to argue the How long was that before you closed the business? Uh, I, I don't know the exact time whether that was before they closed up or after they closed up. I, I don't know. Uh, we just have uh, in fact, two witnesses that they sort of heard two female voices arguing. Do you know how long the two men were together or how long they were known each other? I do not. You said Ms. Norwood is cooperating. Do you have a confession? I, I did not say Ms. Norwood was cooperating. She was cooperative uh, with interviews prior to today. Do you have a confession? I, I, I'm not going to discuss that. Where does Ms. Norwood reside? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know where she is. Is she doing court Monday morning? Or? Understand because there's um, obviously this story is very different. Let me, if I might, if I might. when we respond to a case like this, all we have is what, what we believe was a surviving victim told us. And um, you have to take victims, uh, especially victims of sexual assault, uh, you have to take uh, their. Story as, as true. You have to work on that assumption. As the investigation went on, we went where the evidence led us to go. And it was later on that we determined that uh, I spoke to the media several days ago. Uh, it was asked to be a random crime. And I, I did. I did it. We still work on the assumption of what we were told was true. And with fact, we had a couple of leads that were uh, looked at promise. Uh, those leads did not pan out. The forensic evidence, physical evidence, went in a direction. And, 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 and I may be wrong, but I believe you were told that you were heard of him that he was sexually Correct. There's no evidence that either woman, either of the women, have been sexually assaulted. Were you just saying that before long? No, I was just saying that. That's what the witness, the only witness we had, told me. Does he describe your reaction when you first discovered that this case was not what you thought it was? Uh, my reaction is not uh, My reaction is that the detectives um, went where the evidence led them, and that's the impression of the This was a very difficult case. In many cases, are very sensitive to that. Proud of what they did, what I expected. Is she in person? Yeah. They said she was hospitalized. I assume that was based on what she told me. She had it. Yeah. Yeah. Can we ask Mr. Free from Lululemon if he can tell us anything about the suspect? I don't, I don't think he's going to respond to any questions. But, uh, uh, can you tell us anything about the suspect, your employee? Can you say how long she worked there? Can you say how long she worked there? Do you have her full name? Uh, that would be in the press release. Did right. Ms. Norwood take evidence from the scene that you may still be looking for? Is there any, any evidence that she took things from the scene? Uh, this is still a very, very active investigation. That's certainly something that we can follow up. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Good night. Good job, Chief.